the gunpowder could be in a little pouch, like a little container, and leading with the tube right into here, the gunpowder entrance. And then that tube could come right to here, to a, like a little bowl right here. And the spark, the spark plug. All right, so we got a little gunpowder pouch. It just falls through a tube, entering into here, into a little bowl right here. And then we'll have a little spark plug attached to the bowl. And that's where the explosion will happen. The gases will then spread out in all directions, forcing this, this cylinder back open. And then this could be the exhaust relief valve right here. So that the cylinder won't rupture. As soon as the um, piston moves up to here, the gas could be released through here. The only problem is, if this string were too taut and the explosion was not powerful enough, it could actually rupture this container and explode into the robot. So I need to have a fail safe. Maybe this whole thing would have to be contained within um, another cylinder in case of this cylinder explodes. Or, I don't know. Or it just have to be so strong that maybe it just blow a seal. Like it blow a seal, it, it, like the piston seal, it just blow that seal and come out through the exhaust. So that's a possibility. Just like um, when a when a motor for a car blows a gasket, it could blow a gasket. No, maybe it would need it would need a, a exhaust flange like this, the shape of like a golf tee, right here. That would um, need to be right there, and after the explosion, that exhaust flange would enter air into another tube. So just by controlling that little flange with another motor, um, it could allow any air in here to release as you're trying to close the piston back up to reset it for the next explosion. So it would need a little hole here which could be sealed up. And that's that type of exhaust flange, a little hole at the top of a piston, and a combustion piston, or a combustion cylinder, um, that seals off in that way, is the same way that an automotive cylinder has its exhaust valve and its fuel intake valve. So I could actually just completely steal the design of an automotive combustion chamber, a, a cylinder, for both the fuel intake and the exhaust intake. Rather than reinvent the wheel, I can literally copy their design when I make this. So instead of the gunpowder coming in through the side right here, I would move that to come in right here. So there would be a port here for fuel and a port here for exhaust. And this would be like an exhaust emergency port out the back so that after the the piston head makes it to the back of the chamber it would have an emergency relief um, just as a precaution. I think that'd still be a good idea. Because you don't want the the piston to like blow out the back of the cylinder if it kept going. And t and instead of gunpowder, we could use gasoline and air. So, you know, like, I can literally study carefully the design of a single-stroke engine, and we're basically taking away all the, fa all the parts of the engine except just the combustion cylinder and the piston and piston head. And we're using all the same technology to create a combustion hydraulic pulley system. Combustion based instead of like oil based or steam based. 
We're creating a combustion hydraulic cylinder. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, so much fine tuning and tweaking has been done in the design of automotive combustion chambers that to deviate from that would be unwise. It, I'd want to create a simplified version of that. Like, let's say the straining motors in the bicep are generating a total of 160 pounds of force. And they've reached their max capacity and they're like crap I still can't I, I still can't do this bicep curl I need more oomph so then they tap into this explosion cylinder to give them that extra oomph that gets them the momentum required to continue the bicep curl and then from there the servos are fine they just needed that extra oomph so they might only need 50 pounds of extra force in demand and this this can generate a heck of a lot more than 50 pounds of force. It could probably generate a thousand pounds of force. So I mean, this thing would would be super powerful. Probably wouldn't be needed for the arms. But I mean, if you made a very tiny cylinder like this, a tiny tiny one, that could still be used in the arms for like the biceps or in the chest. I, I might want certain ones for certain areas that might need extra oomph. Chest, arms. Like, just so that the robot could punch through a wall. That'd be pretty cool. Like, punch through drywall. Um, or, like, the main thing, the most important one, would be for the robot to be able to jump. Or to stand up from a seated position without using his arms to help him stand up. I feel like the motors would probably not be strong enough to do that on their own. Using, using combustion... Well, I wouldn't call it an engine. Because an engine's, like using combustion cylinders to turn a crankshaft in order to provide rotational force um, that's not what we're doing here we're just using a single stroke of a combustion cylinder to create extra power for the actuation of one of our muscle joints so it wouldn't be uh, an entire engine. It'd just be using one aspect of an engine. The combustion chamber with the piston and that's it. Just for a single stroke. It wouldn't need to have a return stroke either. It's just a single directional stroke just for the contraction of a muscle and key muscles that might need that from time to time on an as-needed basis. We're not trying to create now a pneumatic robot. We're not creating a hydraulic robot. This is just a single stroke for extra oomph to our normal um, DC motor actuated muscles. It's cheating. So it's enabling us to design a robot with insufficient strength to do the jobs that it would need to do at maximum capacity. We would not need to create servo motor systems strong enough to perform the tasks that the robot would need to perform because it would be able to tap into the extra oomph force of one of these single stroke hydraulic pistons or combustion pistons. And we could potentially create one of these combustion pistons this small. So think of that compared to your idea of an air compressor. I mean, it's this small. We're talking about a tiny amount of gunpowder, size of a BB, entering a little tiny spark, and poof, it pulls a cylinder. But it's pulling it so hard. So if this pen was the cylinder, it's pulling it with, you know, th this little thing with the explosion force could generate 50 pounds or 80 pounds of force maybe 100 pounds of force because that exploding gas would just mm, 
It's super powerful. And how much would it weigh? Well, a little pouch of gunpowder. Maybe maybe the size of that. And then this little tiny cylinder. Um, we might be looking at one pound. You can't get one pound of anything to generate 50 pounds of in-demand force. Not That's just not going to happen. So, but I mean, it might be like 200 pounds of force. It's It could be something crazy. And you can control how much force based on how much gunpowder you add. So you can experiment with it. And this could just be a steel container. Um, it could be cast steel or cast aluminum. How to refill gunpowder easily? Well, you would have a little pouch with gunpowder and then you would open up w with a motor you turn a little lever that could um open up a valve a little bit letting little drops of powder come through and then close it so you, how, however long you open it the valve could be like um a little hole like this and then there's your gunpowder right and the valve could um just slide a little door out of the way just sliding it you know rotating it out maybe the motor that controls it could be right here so the motor would just pull a little string that does that sliding this little door out of the way and the gunpowder which is in here um, would then be able to trickle through a tube and each granule of gunpowder could be like that big you know I mean tiny tiny so that um, not a lot of gunpowder could get through at a time it'd go through really slowly so you can control control in a very fine manner yeah it'd be a gunpowder engine but I mean like I said it's not an engine because it's just a single explosion it's just unidirectional and it's a single stroke of the piston and it's just something that could be used in demand when the, the servo motors are struggling at their max capacity and they need that little extra oomph. It'd be different from a machine gun in that a machine gun's shooting out a projectile whereas this is going to be um, pushing a piston inside a cylinder. What's going to light it? A, a tiny high voltage spark plug. A custom made spark plug. All you got to do is generate a spark. So I thought um, the gunpowder would go inside the cylinder and then um, it drop so let's say this were the cylinder it drop into a little bowl it it'd fill the bowl and then there could be a wire and a wire that form an arc leading into that bowl and then that could cause the explosion but I definitely have to make sure that the wire doesn't explode yeah that wire would explode so th that wouldn't work Well, maybe it could. If the wire was like at the bottom of the bowl, like if the bowl were that way, the wire and the wire would be at the bottom, and then the explosion would come out of the bowl like that. So then the wire wouldn't get damaged. You could use it over and over. The two wires go in, explosion goes up. Because the bowl could be made of like um, iron.
or something. So yeah, it'd be lit by a spark. Just like um, the combustion chamber of a car piston is lit by a spark. Have you ever tried to light gunpowder with a spark? No. Well, yeah, I guess. Well, no. I I have lit gunpowder in the form of a firecracker using a wick, but a wick wouldn't be what we'd want here. We'd want a spark. Now, gunpowder is only one of our three options. We can use fuel and air just like a car. So we can use gasoline and air mixture or any other combustion um, fuel. So maybe gunpowder is not the right answer. I know potato cannons use hairspray to shoot the potato through the pipe. And that's where I got my idea for this. But I feel like hairspray over time would just be really messy. Although, I mean, since the robot might only need an explosion seven or eight times a day, maybe that could be part of his regular maintenance. As I go in there and I soak his explosion pipes... And I clean up the hairspray that's kind of sticking inside there. So maybe I could use hairspray still. And hairspray would be even easier. So imagine we just simply replace this with a little hairspray bottle. Instead, this is just a hairspray bottle. And our motor just presses on that to shoot the hairspray into this chamber. We can get rid of the bowl, get rid of... Well, we'll still need the spark wires. And then, boom, the hairspray causes the explosion. So that would be fine too. That might be easier, but it'd be higher maintenance, I think. I feel as though I'm being... No They're also used in exoskeletons to help workers lift heavier weights to help elderly still get around. For the muscles, you should look in pneumatic. No, 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 no. That's not true. Um, pneumatics require um, an air compressor, um would which would require pneumatic valves, airtight lines, higher maintenance, they're not very accurate, they have a lot of sponginess then. Um, you're looking at a very heavy robot, very expensive robot. It's a far superior system to use DC motors and batteries and electronics. It's far superior. Pneumatics are not the answer. Pneumatics and hydraulics lead to a heavy 400 pound monstrosity of a robot. Has no place in small, in life size, um, intricate humanoid robots like a Terminator. It wouldn't work. Very, very expensive. Very impractical. I, I considered hydraulics and pneumatics from day one. And obviously you have three choices in building a robot. Hydraulics, pneumatics, or servos. Servos are used across the board. Hydraulics have been used like in Big Dog. But look at the mess that gives you. This big, gigantic, outdoor-only, monstrosity, loud-ass robot. No, we don't want another dog. We want an indoor robot. We want something quiet, very precise, very smooth, very clean. Servos are the way. Servos are the future. But this idea of a combustion cylinder to give the servos that extra oomph from time to time in demand it's just a way to hide in what the servos are capable of at, at maximum strength requirement when they need burst strength. So, yeah, to, to fill this chamber with hairspray would be a heck of a lot easier, less moving parts, because you're just basically shooting gas into it and then igniting that gas. That's far less likely to have issues than trying to design a gunpowder intake system. Um, 
Especially since the hairspray is compressed already. All you gotta do is press the button and the hairspray comes out. Set up the tubing and you're good to go. It's like a pressurized injector. Ready ready to go. Any flammable spray, exactly. Yeah. Hairspray is OP overpowered? I don't think it would be overpowered. Because you can just use a tinier amount if you're feeling it's too much power. The idea is to create, you know, a very small cylinder, very lightweight, with tremendous power capabilities, while being cheap in terms of space used, which is at a premium in a robot like this. Space is something to be hoarded. And also, in terms of weight, weight needs to be hoarded. Because all these... All these DC motors are relatively weak, so the robot's going to be a weakling, and we're looking for ways to increase its strength and increase its output capabilities in terms of raw power by using little hacks like this combustion cylinder idea.